In New York City, uh, in 1870, someone named Alfred Beach created something called pneumatic transit, which was a pneumatic system underneath the NY subway system that used differential and air pressure to move people from one point to the other. This is one of the earliest forms of subways in New York City. Let's go towards 1966. In France, there was a system called the Aerotrain, which was a 4.2 mile long train that used air levitation to move vehicles at pretty high speeds. In 2015, Elon Musk introduced a new form of transportation called the Hyperloop. This is a frictionless system that took people in these partially evacuated tubes from LA to San Francisco or New York to Boston in 30 minutes. He created a system, a one mile long test track. It was a partially evacuated tunnel located at a SpaceX HQ, and he invited many folks around the world to come build new vehicles to test it in this new tunnel system. So we formed a team at MIT to tackle this challenge and to see what we can do in the new levitation systems and other forms of high-speed transit. Our team was about 30 engineers, mostly graduate undergraduate students from different parts of MIT, aerospace engineering, chemical engineering, MIT Media Lab. We had folks all over the place that were really interested in pushing forward the envelope of transportation. Our journey took us through several stages. We had a phase one where we took the team through a design process. We worked closely with SpaceX leadership to evaluate and design our, our Hyperloop pod. We built around 200 pages of design documentation. We went through initial testing and initial validation. We submitted this document to SpaceX uh, around January 2019. And then we got approved to be uh, one out of 12 teams out of 400 plus that applied to this program. And ultimately, in July of 2019, we were able to demonstrate this technology at SpaceX HQ. The tunnel system is very interesting. They built around a six feet diameter tunnel that actually exists at SpaceX HQ. And the system has a level of aluminum plates at the very surface of it that lets the vehicles sit on and travel as fast as possible. There's also an I-beam at the very center that lets vehicles hold onto it for stability purposes. So we had to use these mechanical dimensions to design our own vehicle and ultimately be able to demonstrate the proof that this system could work. So our system was a little bit unique. We basically built a system entirely built around air levitation. And ultimately, what air levitation is, is you can imagine, instead of air coming out of a table, it comes out of a puck. And so we took this idea, basically put four little air hockey pucks underneath a, a system, created our own pneumatic regulation circuit, our own electronics, our own high voltage, low voltage systems, and we put a few air tanks on there to demonstrate the concept that you can actually levitate a system without any kind of magnets at all. So the idea was that, can we develop a cheaper, more alternative form of levitation system than what exists today? And our speed target was around 150 to 200 miles an hour, and um, our system was supposed to work under partial vacuum. So we actually demonstrated this pod at the MIT Museum in an unveil event. We had around 200 plus people there that came to check it out. And uh, we were excited about this because um, this really took the concept of what you saw before with the Alfred Beach pneumatic system going forward to the French um, aerotrain and really kind of going forward to the more compact um, electric hovercraft methodology. We had a small test track that we built right inside MIT, underneath the dome. And there was actually one event uh, around three weeks before the competition actually happened where as we were testing the battery systems in the vehicle, a small tear insulation caused a fire. So we had to essentially rebuild the entire vehicle from scratch three weeks before the competition. And after we did that, this is a moment where we put the shell on top and we're ready to go for uh, SpaceX HQ. Our team had to go through hundreds of different tests to uh, make sure we were able to work in the Hyperloop. Here we see Patrick, our pneumatics lead and graduate student from the University of Texas, who helped us design and build a pneumatic system. And we were testing this to make sure the air levitation worked properly, as it's a very complex system. We had high pressure, high voltage, and a lot of other things in between. We were then able to put the system in the Hyperloop and test it in their partial vacuum tunnel. We were able to demonstrate levitation, we were able to demonstrate electric motors, and able to show that this vehicle actually worked in this system. As you can see here, there's a system at the very bottom, which is a little air hockey puck. It's essentially an inflatable balloon that as you put air into it, it inflates and causes air to flow underneath the balloon. And this causes the whole vehicle to lift and basically move frictionlessly across the surface. So you can actually move a 500 pound pod with just the push of your finger. And not only that, you can actually support up to 10,000 pounds of weight with just this air hockey system here. So here we have a small video of the system actually inflating and then going through the tube autonomously. And this is the first test of us showing that we can actually autonomously move a system through this Hyperloop network using air levitation and electric motors. 
So after all of this, we actually placed first in the US for our work and for proving the design worked and passing all the tests. And even despite the, the situation we had three weeks prior to the competition, we were able to pull through and really come to the, the top of the, of the competition. There's so much more that we are hoping to do in the next stage of this program. And as you know, Hyperloop's been around for five to six years, and we see this that in the next five to 10 years, really there will be a full-scale system operational um, someday for all of us. For next steps, we're actually working with the boring company at SpaceX. One of the biggest things that we want to do is look at infrastructure for Hyperloop. Building a tunnel is expensive, and sometimes you want to go underground or above ground. And so the boring company is actually building these infrastructure networks underneath the ground. And about a month ago, our new team was actually out there in Las Vegas working on these tunneling systems with SpaceX and the boring company. So our hope is that one day we can build a pod infrastructure and work closely with, with companies like the Boring Company in order for us to experiment and prove the case that the system would work in the long term. We're super excited that the Hyperloop is a reality today, and we know it's happening and will happen, and hopefully the Boston area would be a center of excellence for us. Our hope is to create a Hyperloop center of innovation and excellence at MIT, and please follow us along at mithyperloop.mit.edu. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.